just to appreciate Jesus. Hallelujah. And that is, uh, we are doing rehearsals for the big day, isn't it? When we get to heaven, we shall always be praising. I want us also to appreciate the father of the house, Bishop Dr. Jimmy Kimani and Mom Alice. Come on, appreciate what a gift, what a prophet. Thank you for this season and this time that God has given you to us. We appreciate. Hallelujah. Let me appreciate Leo and Boy. Uh, Kamau. And let me appreciate you. Amen. <laughs> let me appreciate you. I want us to go to God's word. Remember, you can take an envelope for the tithes, for the offering, for the first fruits, and for the redemptions of your vows and your pledges. Uh, the hospital upgrade, uh, if you're still paying, I remember this is the time to pick your envelope so that by the time we give, it shall be quick and fast. And I know you are ready and prepared to give. Amen. I want us to go to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12, chapter 1, sorry, verse 12 to 14. Let's read together. It says, chapter 1, verse 12. It says, And as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and the years shall not fail. 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Let's read 14 again. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Father, we thank you for your word. Your word shall bring light this morning that my Father to illuminate every dark crevices of our lives. I pray that you give me utterance and you give us understanding that we shall be able to decipher, Lord, what is in your word. For this we receive in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a word there that is said to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation. Heirs means somebody who takes care of an inheritance. Amen. Tell your neighbor you are an heir of Christ. So they are ministering spirits that God has sent to minister to those who shall take after him. The people that he has given an inheritance to. And that will be you. You know, every time a government sends somebody to a foreign land, their security and protection is under the care of that government, isn't it? When they send an ambassador, you know, long time ago the the elderly used to watch, um, uh, was it Rangers, the Texas Rangers, and the, the Cowboys, the, the strong men. Uh, I know we don't have old people here, but uh, the, the people used to watch those movies where one man is an elderly guy who is taking care of the rest of the village, isn't it? But you see, in the years, we used to watch the espionage movies where... Uh, a spy is sent from a country to take care of his business or to spy on his uh, another country or the enemies. And he would send uh, the people we call the handlers. So he becomes an asset. Uh, so the government would take care of the people that they have sent. Those are espionage movies. But, you know, currently in this generation, there is a mixture between the animations and the cartoons and it's hard to understand because everything is in 3Ds, isn't it? Uh, so those of us who are of the Esther years are lost in the mix. Uh, but we are catching up, isn't it? <laughs> but every government used to send somebody to take care of those that they have sent. I came to tell you this morning that God has given a security detail for you. 
because you are a heir of salvation. You are a very important person in the citizenship of God. There are so many works that God has given to the angels. One of the work that you'll find that the angels do is worship the king of kings. In Revelation 5:11, we see tens of thousands and tens of thousands and thousands of thousands before the presence of the Lord worshiping him. They glorify and magnify. That is the work of the angels. And Job 38 verse 4. When Job was arguing with God, asking many questions, God asked him a question. He says, where were you when I established the foundations of the earth? Where were you when I connected the dots of the earth? And where were you when the angels were worshipping and glorifying me? So the angels are there to worship the king. That is one assignment of the angels. You see, the angels are also uh, messengers of God. That they are the messengers that God sends to the ends of the earth. For example, if there are good tidings, the God will send angels. The Bible says he sent an angel called Gabriel to Mary. He says, thou art blessed among women because the favor of God is upon you, isn't it? That you shall receive favor before God. So Gabriel was sent to a virgin woman called Mary. And you'll find that Gabriel was also sent to Daniel. And Michael was sent also to help Daniel in the fight. But angels are ministers and messengers of God. You'll find that angels are sent to us. And they are all around us. The Bible declares that when Jacob was uh, running away and headed to Padan Aram, to his uncle's place, in Genesis 28, verse 12, the Bible says while he slept on a pillow, he saw a ladder that touched the earth and the ends thereof touched the heavens, and angels were ascending and descending. They were messengers of God to give a specific message to Jacob. The Bible declares that the cherubims who are part of angels were put in the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3.24 to guard the garden so that we would not access the tree of life. So they are the messengers that God uses for specific assignments that he has uh, set out for them. Uh, you remember that the angels have ranks and different angels have ranks. Uh, the Bible tells us in Corinthians 15 verse 40 that the glory of one differs from the other. The terrestrial beings and the celestial beings differ from one another and the, angel of, the glory of one angel is different from the glory of another angel. So though there are messengers but they are different in ranks and in purpose. There are people who are fighting angels and there are people who are carriers of messages. Like Gabriel, when you see Gabriel in the Bible, he's carrying news, isn't it? He's a carrier of news. But when you see Michael, what do you see? You see war, isn't it? The Bible declares, Daniel 9 from 10, he says, Gabriel, I saw Gabriel, who was the same angel I had seen before. He had brought good news. He moved swiftly because angels move swiftly. But in chapter 10, you'll find he sent Michael. After he had prayed and his answer was not coming, he sent Michael to fight. He says, the prince of Pasha had withheld my miracle. But Michael was sent so that he can deliver that miracle to me. Hallelujah. May God send a Michael angel for every delayed response of your prayer. May God uh, send a fighting spirit for every delayed prayer that you have made in the mighty name of Jesus. So angels are dynamic, but you must remember that angels are given for those who are heirs of salvation. See, sometimes you're worried of the fallen angels who are demons coming from the devil. I want to tell you good news. That the angel, the, the, the Satan has only a third of the angels. We have the majority of the angels. The Bible says two-thirds of the angels remained in heaven and they are sent for your help. When the devil sends one, hey, God is sending a legion for your rescue and for your protection. 
Hallelujah. So those who are for us are more than those who are for them. See, angels are not uh, these mystical people that we, we read in the movies. Angels are among us. The Bible says when Gen uh, Genesis 18.1, when Ad uh, Abraham was seated at the plains of Mamre, just relaxing with his wife, he saw two men walking by. He ran to invite them to the house and entertain them. He didn't know that he was entertaining angels. Hebrews 13.2 tells us, do not be afraid of uh, entertaining uh, strangers. For thereby some of you have entertained angels unawares. You might be surprised that most of the time you entertain angels in your house. Do not forsake the entertainment of strangers in your house. Because thereby you have entertained angels. Some of the people that you entertain in your house are carriers of your blessing. Are carriers of your miracle. Because the Bible says while they sat, they say, where is your wife? Sarah says she's busy. Says this time next year when I come back, she shall have a child. And the lady was listening. Said, hey, <laughs> these people are full of jokes. Eh? <laughs> That's why he called Isaac laughter, isn't it? Because he has changed his morning into laughter. But you see, at that time, it was not in a service like, now I hear the Holy Spirit moving, now everybody quiet, that's when the angels move. No, the angels are sent to you all the time. The angels are at your work, uh, your workplace. The angels are your family, isn't it? The angels are in dark alleys that you're walking. The angels of God are walking with you all the time. And by entertaining strangers, the angels of the Lord are with you. Hallelujah. They are quick. The Bible tells us they are uh, uh, full of strength. The Bible says, magnify the Lord, O ye angels, who excel in strength. Psalm 103, verse 20. Those are full of strength. So the angels are quick. The angels are full of strength. The, uh, the angels are active. They are strong, but they are sent for the, uh, to, say, uh, to give a message or to serve or to minister to those who are heirs of salvation. And that is you. You are a heir of salvation. Hallelujah. The ministry of angels have not ceased with the Old Testament. The um, ministry of angels, we can see that in the life of Jesus. Jesus was ministered to by the angels. Even his birth was heralded by the announcement of the angels. The Bible says the angels were seen shouting the good news to man that God has come among men. And even the magis, the old men who saw the stars were ministered to by the angels and they followed the stars until they saw the king that had been born in Bethlehem. The Bible says uh, the, the Lord was ministered to even in his uh, uh, fasting and prayer. When he was weak, he was ministered to. So I want to give you a few assignments that God has given angels on your behalf. Because you must understand the purpose for which God has assigned the angels in your life. One purpose that God has assigned to the angels on your behalf is to give you strength. Are you weak? Are you heavy laden? There is help for you. There is strength for you. When you feel that you are down and low and strength has failed you, God has dispatched angels to give you strength. The Bible declares Matthew chapter 4 verse 11. And after he had fasted, the angels came and ministered to him. During his fasting, Mark chapter 1 verse 13. That when he was fasting, the angels came and, and ministered to him. You know the strength that you have is not your own strength. God shall give you divine strength. Because there is support for you. God has dispatched his angels to give you support. So you are not like the children of the earth. You are not like the heathen without support. God has dispatched enough support for you. For those who are the beloved of God. Who are the heirs of salvation. Who have the seal of the Holy Spirit upon them. God has dispatched help and support. 
that you shall not be alone. You shall not use the strength of men, but the angel of God around you shall give you support. It says he supported him. The Bible tells us when Elijah was exhausted, running away from a woman, right? He was crying, I'm going to die. <laughs> the Bible says, and he sent his angel, arise and eat. There was support for him. The angel came and strengthened him. And he was able to carry his ministry. You servant of God that is serving God and is wondering like my strength is exhausted. I can't do ministry for any more time. There is support for you. There is strength for you. You can rise it up, uh, up again with the strength that God has sent and, and, and start service again. Because the angel of God is just around you to give you support. Hallelujah. You can find that when Gideon was there threshing uh, by the threshing floor and running away from the Amalekites, hiding uh, his wheat uh, under a rock, uh, he was wondering, what shall we do? Running away from the enemies. The Bible says uh, in Judges 6, 11, and the angel appeared there, there be, be, behind an oak tree. And he says, thou, Gideon, mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. You see, after that, Gideon was a different person. He thought he was the least of the tribes. And he was the least in his family. But the Lord said, go in this thy might. Because there was strength given to him. And God shall give you strength again. Even in your work, God shall give you strength again. In your marriage, God shall give you strength again. You shall not abandon that family, that marriage, because God is giving you strength. May strength arise in every heart. May the strength arise in every believer in this house. May God send strength from Zion and lift you up again. The Bible says, uh, uh, strengthen the weak knees and put strength to the feeble hands and let the warriors arise and come back for battle again. May that warrior-like spirit arise in you again in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are warriors because they are lands. Anybody who is downcast because of what is happening in the country, may God give you strength again. As we appear before God every Wednesday, may that warrior-like spirit arise in you again. And say, our country shall not go to the dogs. Our country belongs to God. And the warriors in this nation shall arise until we see the manifestation of the kingdom of God in every office of the government. So God has sent strength to you. You are not a heathen. You are not an orphan. There is strength and support. Hallelujah. That excites me. There is strength. <laughs> the strength we have is not from steroids. <laughs> the strength we have is not from marijuana. It, it, it's, it is not from another drug. <laughs> Because another drug has side effects and there's withdrawal symptoms. But this drug we take, oh, hallelujah, has everlasting effects, isn't it? <laughs> Gives you strength. That's why now I understand that you shall run and not. Right? Because when people are saying now this is done, have you ever gone for the mountain climbing? The last time we went, was it under 10? Uh, we climbed, uh, we started losing some people. You know, before even we started going up, they say, now, this is where I've arrived. What I will do, I'll keep your stuff. <laughs> they, they give themselves responsibilities which are not allocated, right? And they say, now from here, uh, by the way, I'm going to take care of your bags. <laughs> but we didn't have that role when we came. Then we go after a while, right, after the first peak, some people say, okay, I'll just wait for you here. I'll take care of your water, the large, you know, so that when you come back, you'll have supplies. But you are not going to be like that because God is taking care of you. Another assignment for the angels is deliverance. Another assignment is deliverance. That's why scripture says, bless the Lord, O my soul. Psalms 103. 
and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. The Bible says that he that forgiveth thy sins and he that healeth thy diseases says he delivers me from what? From destructions and crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies. God shall deliver you from every situation that you are in. May deliverance come to you. See, the angels of God are called for you to deliver you out of every fix. Every fix that you are in, the angels of God are dispatched for your help and your, for, your, for your support. You see, Peter one day was put in prison. The Bible says in Acts 12, that, and prayers were made for Peter. The brethren made prayers for Peter. While prayers were going on, the angels of God were dispatched to Peter in prison. The Bible says, and the angel appeared to Peter and said, it is time to go. It is time to leave this place. Put on your sandals. Put on your coat. We are living here. And he opened the first gate. And he opened the second gate. And he said, from, now, from here, I think you can walk by yourself. <laughs> May the angels of God be sent to you. For every prison that you are in, for every prison that you found yourself in, the angels of God are sent specifically to deliver you. For every condition, whatever condition is in your children, in your family, may God deliver. May the deliverance of God come from Zion. May the angels of God be sent. Whatever delayed or stagnant prayers that you have made, God is sending a fighting spirit to deliver you out of every chain that you found yourself in. God is sending deliverance. You see, one day, King Nebuchadnezzar did a mistake. <laughs> and he sent three Hebrew boys, Hanania, Michelle, and Azaria, who are named after the Babylonian gods, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Says, if you do not bow before me, I'm going to send you into the fire. Daniel chapter 3. He says, no, <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> huh? You don't understand. What you're seeing here... Our soldiers are more than yours. <laughs> we, I, I, I like our children. They say, my, my dad has a bigger gun than yours. Eh? Uh, you know, our children understand this revelation. My dad is stronger. Eh? My dad is stronger. He can lift something like this. That's our dad, isn't it? So he's saying, I'm going to send you to the, to the, to, to, to the fire. He said, hit it. These people are very rebellious. Hit it. When they send them there, he said, but how many people did you send? Call an ophthalmologist to give me some, <laughs> some spectacles. I see the fourth one. And the fourth one looks like the son of man. The angel was dispatched. In that fire, you are not alone. But you see, that fire is not meant to consume you. Because God is calling you and putting you there so that to give glory to his name. By the time he snatches you out of his fire, the fire. See, because God has a tendency of making a big deal out of everything you go through. Uh -huh. He waits for a crowd. How many people will believe in me? So, if you are going through something and you are alone, you see, there is no, nobody to convert. <laughs> He's waiting for a crowd. So, don't get worried that you are... You, you, you are taking longer. Huh? No, he's waiting for a crowd to convert. <laughs> so by the time he sends you there, when they come out, Nebuchadnezzar said, in this kingdom, we shall not bow to anybody other than the God of these young boys. He's waiting for a crowd. Are you going through something? Deliverance is on the way, but he's waiting for a crowd. The people to gather around you. The people to see how bad enough you are. So that by the time God delivers you, by the time God snatches you, it shall be clear. It is not the hand of man. It is the hand of the Almighty God. God is coming through for you. Hallelujah. God is coming through for you. The angel of the Lord is dispatched for your help. Hallelujah. 
I can see angels surrounding you. You see, that is why a service, that's why a church, you should run to church when you hear people are gathering. The Bible says, Hebrews 12, verse 22, he says, we have gathered in the mountain of Zion in the innumerable measure of his angels. Angels are gathered around church. There are multitudes of angels in this place. People are gathered waiting to hear what need does he have. That's why David will say, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. You see, he had revelation. It is not a social club. It's not just a meeting, welfare place. The church is a, a place where angels are gathered. The church is a place where angels are gathered waiting to serve you. Do you know why Paul says, 1 Corinthians 11.10, he says, cover your head, ladies. Why? He says, because... There are angels in the service. Angels are all over. <laughs> you are not just seated close to your neighbor. No, you are seated close to angels. Isn't it? You are seated close to angels. So deliverance is coming to you. Second Kings chapter 6, you see, uh, Elisha had, uh, the king of Assyria had sent multitude to capture Elisha, the problem maker. Uh, <laughs> you see the servants of God in scripture are always problem makers isn't it they were not neutral people you see today we have neutral believers uh, in the environment they are neutral they are not causing any harm you see you are you're either causing harm or you are conforming if you find your place you are comfortable and the place is comfortable means you are conforming yeah? you are in the you see even osmosis and efficient, they tell us, is movement from one gradient to another, isn't it? There's lower gradient and higher grade. There, was, there will be no movement if the gradient is the same, isn't it? So any, any, the law of equilibrium tells us that everything must be balanced, isn't it? If they are not balancing, there must be return to balance, isn't it? So it means if you are balancing, you are the same weight. But you see, Elisha, when the Assyria army came, and Gehazi looked and said, we are done. He says, uh -uh, open your eyes. <laughs> there are angels. This place is full of angels. This place is full of angels. A lady sent me a text the other day. He says, uh, there is a man of God who has sent me a text. He says, send a seed of 277 shillings. Because I've seen the de some demonic powers hovering around your life. <laughs> I said, young lady, I thought we taught you better. Do you attend services in church? Eh? I thought our bishop has been teaching you these things. Eh? You see his lack of understanding. You don't see demonic spirits everywhere. See angels. There are multitudes of angels. We have a bigger army. Why are Christians seeing demons everywhere? See angels. The angels of God are around us. There's a bigger multitude of angels around you. Hallelujah. So strength is sent to you. Deliverance is sent to you. But let me tell you. You know deliverance is when you are stuck in something. But there is protection. Protection uh, is what we call before the fact, isn't it? That before something happens, the Bible says, Psalm 34, 7, the angels of the Lord encompass around those who fear him. Yeah? So you are not alone. You are encompassed by the angels of God. They are around you. You are surrounded. Have you seen the movies where they say we are surrounded? Now you are surrounded by the angels of God. See, the Bible says, Matthew 26, 53, that Jesus said when, you know, there, there was a, a very zealous servant of, of Jesus called Peter. When they came to capture him, he had something. You know, there are these ministers who walk with something. Eh? In Jora, eh? Anatembe and Anjora. He removed it and by the time they were thinking, the soldier's ear was chopped already. The Bible says, ah, that's not how we work. <laughs> you see, at my disposal, I can call legions of angels. But I just choose not to. So every of us have legions of angels. Mm. Do not worry. Do not be perturbed. Do not be greatly dismayed. 
you have a legion of angels. The Bible says they are ministers to those who are heirs of salvation. You are the commander. They are taking care of you. So you give a command. That is why the Bible says do not worship angels because they are lower than you. Do you not know? First Peter says we shall judge the angels. First Corinthians 4.9 says that they watch at us and see a spectacle. They wonder at us. Hebrews 2.6 says, who is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care about him? You have put him a little lower than the angels and put everything under him. That you've put him in charge of your creation. In Psalms 8 chapter, uh, verse 5. So the angels are lower <laughs> in rank, isn't it? So you are the commander. Tell him what you want him to do. Because we have legions of angels. I want you to come out of this service with a realization that you have help. I want you to come out of this service with understanding that you have an army around you. That you can command and say, please take care of this. Take care of this. Surround me. Surround my children. Surround my job. Surround my business. You see, Balaam wanted to curse the children of Israel, isn't it? And until the donkey talked to him. Numbers 22. The Bible says, go and do only what I will tell you. The Bible is commanding every dark spirit in your life, every enemy of your life who have thought of speaking a negative word or cursing your business or your family. He said, you shall only speak what I shall call you to speak. You are only called to bless the people of God. May blessing be yours. May the blessing of God reach you. Because the angel of God are dispatched to you in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. You see, we, go, we attend many funerals. If you understand the protection of God, we are seated there as the pastors who are waiting. And they have given a little child to read something. They have written, it's called tribute. Sometimes, if you have attended funerals, you know, isn't it? So this little ch child is reading, I know grandpa, we loved you. I know your spirit is going to take care of us. No, you don't know the spirit of the dead. There are angels dispatched for you. And you're, speak, you're sitting there as a pastor saying, do these people know, understand what they are doing? Because now you are inviting a familiar spirit in the life of your child, isn't it? I know it's a, uh, it's a trying moment. But you see, I don't need the spirit of my late mom to watch over me. I have legions of angels dispatched for me. You don't need the spirit of the dead. Ecclesiastes 9.5 says, the living know they are going to die. But the dead have no memory. They know not a thing. For their memory is blotted off from the face of the earth. Their anger, their envy, their jealousy. They have no part. Scripture says they have no part to play on anything under heaven. The dead, once they are gone, they are gone. Leave them alone. So don't, don't do some ceremonies beside the grave that we are doing memorial or prayers. Those are just religious things. Is your tradition clothed with a religious cloth? Hallelujah. And speaking of the dead, my father is going to watch over me. You don't need a father to watch over you. You have the Holy Ghost, who is a comforter, who is a friend. Then you have angels, multitude of angels to watch over you, to do your command, to fight your wars. Hallelujah. Invoke the fellowship of the angels. It is not for a chosen few, but it's for everybody that chooses. It's not for the pastors, for the apostles in town. <laughs> Let me go and hear what an the angel is telling the apostle. The angel is with you. Can you arise? <laughs> Hallelujah. There is help for you. Just lift, lift up your hands for a minute. Do you need the ministry of the angels today? As they worship the Father. Matthew 18, 10 says, Do, Don't you know that their angels always behold the face of God? They are guardian angels for each one of us. They behold the face of God. Come and invoke that spirit right now. Tell the angels, I'm sending you the angel of war. Fight my battle in that office. In that application job, that application that I've sent, 
angel, I'm sending you there to fight my battles. The angel of protection, the legions of angels are at your service. Oh, Rika la babosika yante rebesa. Riza la bosika yante keshera bosika. Raza kalaka sheka rabayante rebeboza. You are not alone. You are not alone. Don't feel like you are alone. You are dismayed. You are discouraged. You are not alone. The ministry of angels. Raza kalaka sherera rabayante rebeboza. Hallelujah. Sheka la babosika. Just praise him for a minute. Just praise him for a minute. There is help from Zion. There are angels I can see walking in this place. Uh, there is a ladder to heaven ascending and descending. Taking your cars and your problems to heaven and descending with your blessing. There are blessings descending right now in this service uh, for every one of us. Uh, there is a parcel for each one of us that is be dispatched for you. There is help from Zion. In the name of Jesus, there is a fight uh, that the angels of war is released in the name of Jesus. Uh, the, pre the chief prince is released from heaven for your fight and for your warfare. In the name of Jesus. Reza kabasata laba. Shenta laba bosaya. Reka sata laba bosaya. May you be conscious of the spirit of God, but may you be conscious of the ministry of the angels right now in the name of Jesus. For every one of us, receive the ministry of angels. Receive the ministry of angels. Experience the ministry of the angels. Experience the ministry of the angels right now. Reba katala babosaya. I counsel every bad dream, every bad dream, every cloud that is hanging over your life and over, over your head. Uh, may the ministry of the angels come upon you to give you sweet dreams, to give you peace uh, and comfort and company in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, holy God. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless you that we are heirs of salvation. We are special ambassadors from heaven. And because of that, you have released an army, a legion of angels for our care, for our ministry, for our strength, for our protection, for our deliverance. I pray for an awareness in every believer today as they live here this week, oh God, I speak an experience by the angels, a company of the angels, oh God, an awareness of the ministry of the angels in the mighty name of Jesus. I release a warrior angel in every life to fight every battle for them in the mighty name of Jesus. I release a delivering angel in their life to deliver them from every chain of darkness, from every prison, from hell, in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak, Lord, a ministering angel to strengthen them, O oh God, and to give them help and peace in the mighty name of Jesus. For this is done in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, shout to Jesus. Acclaim, exhort his holy name. Hallelujah.